Hi friends, I'm Abby and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about Emily Henry and where to start with Emily Henry if you've not read any of her books and some of my thoughts and opinions on some of her books. So in total, looking at Emily Henry's bibliography, she has eight published books according to Goodreads. Four of these books are YA books which have been published a few years ago now. So she has The Love That Split the World, A Million Dunes, When the Sky Fell on Splendour, and Hello Girls, which was co-authored with Brittany Cavallero. Those books I have not read, and those books I'm not going to be talking about in this video because I have no comment to make on them. They are all YA from what I believe, and I think some of them have got some speculative elements within them. Then, in 2020, Emily Henry transitioned into writing adult romance books. So to date she has four romance books published, all of which I have read, and these are the books that I will be going into detail on my thoughts and opinions and where to start uh, in this video. So she has Beach Read, People We Meet on Vacation, Book Lovers, and her latest release, Happy Place. Now, of these four, where do you start? I mean, you can start with any of them because uh, they're all standalones, they're all, uh, you can completely go into any of them without reading any of the others, that they all stand alone. They are all part of a shared universe. You will start to see like hints of the other books within the books. Uh, so you do get references every now and again, uh, which are the tiniest of tiniest of Easter eggs, but they're very fun to spot. So of these four romances, where do you start? So firstly, I'm gonna talk about elements that all of these books share. So what do all of these books have in common? Then I'll go into the romance tropes within the books and talking about the individual plots. And then I will give my rankings and my opinion on which ones I prefer the most, having read them all. So elements in all of these. They all have a cute romance. They do. There is a romance in all of them. Surprise, surprise. Uh, they also have other more contemporary elements. They are not just solely focused on the romance. There are other relationships, I would say, in all of the books, whether that's relationships with family members or friends. There is always a relationship outside of the romantic pairing uh, that is probably quite front and centre within each of these books. I would say as well that they all deal with some serious topics within them, whether that's death of a family member or cults or where you feel about your, your work-life balance. Like there is always something real world in these books. Additionally, I would say that quite a few of these books have holidays in them as a theme, whether that's holiday homes or that the characters are on holiday, uh, that or vacations if you're American, but uh, Beach Read, it is at a holiday location. You and me on vacation go through multiple holidays. Book Lovers, there it is about people that go to a remote uh, village, town, on a holiday. And Happy Place is about people going on a group holiday there is holidays as a theme here. It's not people living their like day-to-day -day lives, it's people going on holidays. So uh, potentially very good books if you are on holiday or like holidays, uh, but holidays as a theme. And as well, characters that enjoy reading. There are, every, every book there is a character that seems to enjoy reading, whether they are actually writers themselves, whether they work in publishing, whether they enjoy reading cozy mysteries. There are elements of people that enjoy books and reading as a hobby within these books. Okay, thinking about your tropes, there are different romance tropes used within these. I would say, for your main ones, Beach Read and Book Lovers are rivals to lovers. I, I feel like enemies to lovers is a bit too strong of a term, but more rivals to lovers. You and Me on Vacation is friends to... I'm very sorry, I think I've been interchanging You and Me on Vacation and People We Meet on Vacation because of the US, UK changing in title, but on vacation is friends to lovers and then happy place is second chance romance so different tropes depending on which one you might prefer i know some people are completely against second chance romance they much prefer enemies to lovers or vice versa that uh, people have very different tastes on the tropes that they enjoy the most so those are the tropes that you get uh, in these books. Let's talk about three of them. So this is in the date order publication, so I'll go through them in that order. So the quick summary of Beach Read is that we have January and Gus, and these are both authors. January writes romance, whereas Gus writes more hard-hitting contemporary fiction. Uh, and they did go to the same uh, university, college, um, and they were sort of more, they were rivals there. And January has recently acquired the her father's home following his death 
uh, and she was coming to terms with finding out that he was having an affair. Uh, so she moves in there to do it up and sell it to find that Gus is her neighbour and it is their relationship and the changes to their relationship as they reconnect after their time apart, how they are both authors, how they are both struggling from writer's block and them trying to restart or re-kick them into gear into writing their next book by doing different dates that fit with the other person's uh, writing style. So January takes Gus to the fair and sort of more date-like romantic things, whereas Gus takes her to see a cult uh, because that is what he is writing about. Uh, so it is them going on different, very, very different styles of date uh, as they get to know each other and get to realise that there is more to their relationship than being rivals. Then you and me on vacation, or people we meet on vacation, uh, is following Poppy and Alex, who uh, have been going on a yearly holiday for 12 different summers. Uh, so every summer they go away together, uh, they meet different people on their holidays, they have a week together in a different holiday destination, as they are, as they are good friends. Uh, I think they met in, in college. But then two summers ago, it all goes wrong, uh, that they are on, that they are on holiday together and something happens that has disrupted their friendship. And they are no longer talking until we get to the present day and they are going to retry and have their yearly holiday together. Uh, and so this is set in two timelines where we follow each of the holidays that they went through in the past and exploring those past timelines up until the holiday that was two summers ago, as well as in the present as they are going on holiday together. Uh, so you, you are constantly turning the pages, wanting to figure out why things have gone wrong and why they haven't spoken in two years and also enjoying the angst of them being back together in the present. Because you know that they're no longer going to be friends, that they're going to be more than friends. I would say that this is the most light-hearted of Emily Henry's books, that this is more romance-centric, uh, whereas some of the other ones are a mixture between romance and contemporary, whereas this, I would say, leans much more on the romance and doesn't have those like hard-hitting topics so much in it. Book lovers, we are following Nora and Charlie, and they are both work in the publishing industry in New York, and they're both sort of workaholics. One day, Nora's sister persuades her to go on holiday with her to take a break and uh, to have some time away. They swap the city for a months long holiday in Sunshine Falls, uh, which is a small town in, I think it was South or North Carolina. But while she's there, she bumps into her nemesis, Charlie. And it is them dealing with the shock of seeing each other there, knowing that they're going to be there for some time together, their work relationship, their friendship. Um, and this does have a lot of focus on Nora's sister and the sisterly relationship there. And uh, this is the relationship that Nora, the, the pressure that Nora feels to act as both a sister and a sort of like a mother figure for her sister, uh, as well as that their sort of sh their shifting dynamics as they are both aging and getting older, and that relationship dynamic changing. So I'd say that that relationship is in some ways even more of a focus of this book than the romantic relationship in this. That the sibling relationship has quite a big focus in this one, and then her latest release, Happy Place, which. It follows a group of friends uh, that all go on holiday together and they have been to this destination multiple times as they have grown up, they met in college and they are now in their 30s, they all have lives and jobs that do not, uh, that are spread out across the US and so they don't interact all that often apart from the week on holiday that they get to spend together and reconnect. However, this year uh, our main characters Harriet and Wynne have actually broken up and they haven't told their friends and they find themselves all together in this holiday location, pretending to their friends that they are still together so as not to ruin the week, and so as not to, to ruin the, the friendship dynamics. So it, it is following the events in the present as they are exploring this, uh, this holiday and uh, the relationships and in the present day, as well as the past and seeing Wynne and Harriet connecting to begin with in college, and then their relationship over the past 10 years as they connect and how life sometimes gets in the way and seeing what actually broke up their relationship. So that is a quick run through of all of their plots. Some things that I thought about whilst doing that is that actually You and Me on Vacation and Happy Place have alternate timelines, so a past and a present. And I know that can be 
funny for some people. So uh, if you are not a fan of that, then potentially go for Book Lovers or Beach Read where they are just set in one timeline. Or if you do like that, then you know which ones to target as well. I will say that I have loved all of these books, but I do have favourites. Uh, I do, I do, I do have favourites. So I think my order could probably change. Uh, I have only read all of these books once. Uh, and so it has been sort of one a year as they've been published. So 2020 through to 2023. So obviously Happy Place is much fresher in my brain compared to uh, Beach Reef, which I read a few years ago now. I do find that all of these books are very, very bingeable. For, I think for all of these, I pretty much have read them in a sitting. Uh, or in a couple of sittings. Uh, Happy Place most recently I read wow, 250 pages of it in a day, like I think I read the first 100 pages in a day and then waited a couple of days and then I binged the whole rest of it in another day and they are very good at distracting you from things that are going on around you. They completely do suck you in, that I do get very invested into these characters and their lives and the plot of them uh, and wanting to wanting there to be a happily ever after not to say that i do not have faults with them i do have faults with them uh they are i i, would, I don't think they are 100 percent perfect books but i do think that they are very very enjoyable books so if i'm thinking about my order as of right now my order of enjoyment would probably be this although yeah, some of this may be that i had no expectations of going into beach reef so I had a really, really positive experience of it. I also have maybe some recency, recent recency bias, potentially with the, these bottom two that I'm being a bit more picky with them. Uh, but for now, I think Beach Read is my favorite, followed by You and Me on Vacation, then Happy Place, and then Book Lovers. I, this one being because I expected more enemies to lovers in it than what I got, that there isn't so much enemies to lovers, uh, that they actually get together quite quickly. Happy Place, because there's some miscommunication. So that's what's brought it down in the in the third spot, and then these two, I I, do, I have less critiques on. I think uh, so. There are, those are a couple of my personal critiques of the books. Additionally, there are two separate endings for Beach Read. There is a UK ending and a US ending. Uh, I have heard. Uh, I mean, I read the UK ending uh, and I really enjoyed it. I have heard what the US ending is and I feel like I wouldn't have enjoyed that one so much. I feel like the UK ending is quite cute, whereas the US ending is sickly sweet. So those would be um, some thoughts on this. And I also as well would say that I have enjoyed all of her books, all, all of her romance books, that I have pretty much given these all sort of a 4.5 to 5 stars, that I have really thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed these. Whereas I do feel like for some people, they love one but don't love another one so much. Uh, for me though, I have really enjoyed them all and I look forward to more Emily Henry romance books, hopefully every year for the foreseeable future, because I find them so comforting to read, that these books do bring me joy to read them. Uh, those are my thoughts on Emily Henry's romance books. Let me know if I've helped you choose where you want to start, if you share any of my opinions with these books. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my future videos. Bye.